right, let's do this. The future. Um, so kick it off. I'm Zach. Uh, this is my daughter, Callie. Uh, back here is my Australian shepherd, Iggy. <laughs> and way in the back, that's my, uh, my six-year-old, Maddie. Um, so I started my career about 20 years ago as a designer, and then uh, about 15 years ago, somehow slid my way into product and executive roles. Uh, I've worked at Creative Market and Autodesk and hired and a whole long list of startups. Um, but today I'm the CEO of Dribble. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to, to say. Um, this is a, a video from my home office in Walnut Creek. This was for my team for uh, I do uh, CEO office hours uh, virtually. Um, our, our entire team works 100% remote um, from all over North America. So for those not familiar with Dribbble, um, there's probably a few. Uh, we're home to some of the world's best designers and creative professionals. It's the place where web designers and graphic designers and illustrators and iconographers and logo designers and every other niche under the sun uh, share shots of their work, their process, uh, in, their, in their current projects. So we're a design community uh, at our heart. Uh, the platform's grown to become a go-to platform for designers and creative professionals and an inspiration destination for tens of millions of people. For brands who are looking to hire designers, uh, Dribbble's become the number one resource for discovering and connecting with uh, creative talent around the globe. Dribbble helps some of the world's best design forward companies from Wayno, Apple, IDEO, Facebook, Google, Airbnb, you name it, uh, get exposure for their design teams and, and help them hire expert creatives. So the future. So, uh, so I sat on this one for a while. Um, I've been under the weather for a couple days and procrastinated putting this presentation together. And so I was wondering what to, uh, what to write about uh, or what, what, to, what to talk about today. So I had a hard time drilling it down. Um, one idea is that, you know, I thought we could talk about how we've entered the golden age of design, right? Um, technology has flattened the competitive landscape. It's lowered the barrier of entry. Uh, you know, 15 years ago, you had to buy a $100,000 Sun Microsystem server to host your website. You had to hire Java developers out of Stanford. Today, there's frameworks like Ruby on Rails. There's AWS. Um, so the cost of starting a, bit, a business is lower, and the, the ability to compete globally is easier than ever before. So to put that in numbers, in 2012, there was about 150 SaaS companies in the MarTech space. And today, there's over 7,000. So paradox of choice, super real. It's hard for consumers to, to uh, decide. And so how, how companies are now looking at uh, Staying competitive and differentiating in the market is by investing in a better user experience, investing in building a better product. Um, and so design has become the new competitive advantage. Just in the last few years, we've seen um, this, this kind of massive shift. Uh, you know, I thought we could talk about this 2017 study from Stanford. Uh, it revealed that 75% of uh, users make a judgment within 1 20th of a second about the company's credibility based on the visual design of its website. Um, so there's a quality shift happening in technology. Five years ago, you could launch a scrappy website and get traction. But today's internet users have a higher bar. If your product looks like crap, people aren't going to trust it, and they're going to go to a better design competitor. So good design is table stakes. Uh, so we're not going to talk about that, though. Uh, it was going to talk about how uh, more than 15% of Fortune 500 are now making design a priority at the executive level. Uh, it's not just Apple, Nike, Target, who you'd imagine being design-centric. These are companies like Kohl's, uh, uh, McDonald's, Ford Motor Company, who are hiring chief creative officers, chief, chief design officers, and building massive design teams uh, at these companies. So enterprises are investing in design because they recognize that the customer experience of the products offers a competitive advantage attracts and retains customers and reduces support costs. Uh, over the last 10 years, design-led companies have maintained significant stock market advantage, outperforming the S&P by an extraordinary 211%. Um, that's a quote that's, that's floating around uh, the Twitter sphere that's pretty impressive. 
Um, IBM is a great case study to illustrate this change in demand for design. Uh, five years ago, the ratio of engineers to designers was 72 engineers for every one designer. And today, it's eight engineers for every one designer. And on their mobile teams, it's three engineers for one designer. And we're seeing this shift in demand across the entire industry. Um, in Silicon Valley, it's not news. We've seen Dropbox and Airbnb and you know, a lot of design-led companies um, really take a design-centric approach to their companies. But now we're starting to see it in you know, old blue, IBM, and a lot of uh, what, what we kind of think of kind of antiquated corporate, uh, corporate companies. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, I could have made an entire talk about how remote design work is becoming an industry standard for, for kind of the first time ever. Uh, virtual conferencing, whiteboarding, and rapid prototyping has given designers and other pros uh, uh, this incredible slew of freedom, right? So no commute. Um, as a business owner, we have no uh, expense in office lease. By the way, Dribble is 100% uh, remote company. Uh, I think I mentioned that. Um, our employees are able to work from home or from local, local coffee shops. So we have the freedom to travel and explore the world and work from anywhere. Um, Dribble, we're just under 50 employees, fully remote. Um, but our friends at Envision and uh, Automatic and GitHub and, and Elastic and you know the list goes on and on have uh, been amazing case studies that you can grow uh, a business into plus 500 employees, fully remote and do it uh, incredibly successfully. Um, so remote designing for the internet from anywhere in the world is the ultimate professional freedom, uh, but I don't want to talk about that. OK, so we can go down a rabbit hole uh, talking about the ethics of designing for robotics and artificial intelligence and virtual reality and drones and voice interfaces and artificial reality and designing for chip implants in your brain so that you can control machines with your thoughts. Uh, but I'm not going to go down there either. Um, uh, it can go get into uh, oops, there we go. Get into design trends for for 2019, but okay, I'll stop right there. So, um, so what I really want to talk about tonight is uh, is Dribble. So, um, so I took over the company as CEO about two years ago, um, and uh, and and one of the kind of I think the soul crushing experiences of this job is I've been able to be uh, the target for a fire hose of a lot of, of critique and opinions about this, this very unique and special platform that's, that's very close to my heart. Um, and tonight, I would like to give you a rare inside lens into uh, what we've been up to recently and, uh, and where we're headed in coming years. Um, please keep this in this room. Uh, this is for us to talk about. And please don't tweet slides if, if you can help it. If you do, I don't care, whatever. <laughs> um, OK, so in, in two years uh, since, since I joined, uh, this is a pat on the back, I guess, but uh, traffic's up 100%, membership's up 300%, revenue's up 4x. In 2018 alone, our community size uh, has uh, nearly doubled. Uh, this has led to 40% more job postings, 80% more sent work increase that reached 50% more designers than in 2017. That was a long sentence. Um, we're moving so quickly that we even made the Inc. 5000 list today, uh, this year, this past year, for the fastest growing, uh, one of the fastest growing private companies in America. This achievement puts triple in rarefied company with the likes of Microsoft, Dell, Pandora, Timber, Timberland, LinkedIn, Yelp, and Zillow. Yelp, maybe. What do you know? Um, so we've never been short on good ideas, but we've been short on hands to help us execute. Uh, we've reinvested our profits back into the company, and uh, in, the last, in the last two years, we've uh, grown the company from eight to 48 uh, remote workers. And this, in turn, has just allowed us to tackle our roadmap at a much greater velocity. And so that's where you see a lot of these inflection points happening is just because there's just more stuff getting done. Um, we made three recent acquisitions. Uh, we, launched a, uh, we launched Hangtime. It's a profitable traveling design conference that is held in a different city twice a year. Uh, we fly our remote team out to have FaceTime with each other. Is one of the reasons why we launched this conference is we wanted uh, a team trip and get everyone uh, together in person. We invite uh, some of the world's leading designers, like Hallie and, and 
our, our boy featured right here that you'll, you'll hear from him in a, in a little bit. Um, but it's been super fun. Uh, we, we invite the local design community to come hang out. We have parties and, and then our internal team just gets to hang out for a week, which is, which is super fun. So Dribble will celebrate its 10th anniversary this summer. Um, while we're nearly a decade old, I personally feel that we're an inflection point and we're still in our infancy. Uh, we have a big ambition for the platform and the business. Um, you know, when we launched in 2009, uh, the, the original ambition for, for what Dribble was, was uh, a place to show, share what you're working on. Dan was speaking at a lot, Dan Cederholm, our co-founder, was speaking at a lot of conferences uh, in, the, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, some of you might not even been born yet, I don't know. Um, Dan was, was one of the few people blogging about uh, design and web standards, and he, he's written, I don't know, half a dozen books or something. And um, I actually, funny story, this is kind of on tangent, but uh, my first job out of college, I was working on a design team down the street, actually, and the design team sat with the, the front end team, and the front end manager came over one day with a box of books from Amazon, and he gave one to everybody. And he's like, "Okay, no more inline styles, no more of this shitty market. We have web standards now." And it was Dan's book, and I still have it. And so when I joined the company, I was like, "Should I ask him for an autograph? Is that <laughs> weird?" And I, I didn't, but wanted to. Um, so yeah, so the, the, the community's changed quite a lot from that original inception of that, that ask of what are you working on. The, the original idea was to show a work in progress, a moment in time. It was a platform for getting feedback from a very small elite uh, community of designers. Um, and you fast forward a decade and it's become a portfolio network. And it's become a place where we have surveyed our community and uh, 35 percent are using Dribble as their sole portfolio, and they don't even have a personal site um, hosted anywhere. So bringing that in um, was was a was a big uh, learning for us. Um, and by the way, it's it's been a bootstrapped company from from day one. We're still bootstrapped and profitable, never taken outside uh, investment money. So we're on a mission, um, and so. Uh, so I have Twitter, so I definitely uh, understand that we have a lot of room to grow in a lot of areas, but, um, but we put together a mission statement, and, uh, and this is really something that we refer back to quite a lot. And uh, in, in October, November of 2016, I, I sat down with Dan and Rich about this, about this job and started to just ask about what were the biggest opportunities for Dribble. Um, and as we went along, I, I just wrote on a little piece of note card, just like words that were like buzzwords as, as our conversation was going on. And, uh, and, and the team then and, and Dan and Rich just weren't blind to a lot of the, the issues the platform has and the community wants. And um, they were just short on a lot of people to help them um, find solutions here. Um, and running a community is, is a lot of hard work, uh, especially um, when it's for a very vocal, sensitive to change uh, community of designers. Um, but I remember writing down that list of words. Um, the list showed me really the potential of Dribble, and it's the reason I joined the company. Um, because I knew Dribble, and at the time we were a top 1,000 website in the world, but was still an unpolished diamond in that we had a lot of room to grow and that this could be a much bigger thing than it was in 2016. In February of 2017, we, we got together and wrote a mission statement. And this, is the, this is the beginning of it. We're on a mission to build the world's best uh, platform for designers. It goes on, and I'll get to it in a minute. Um, Google has a corporate mission statement. It's to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. They will likely never accomplish that mission, and we will probably never likely accomplish our mission, but we, every day we strive closer to that goal. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, but every day, thanks to uh, our amazing team, Dribble gets better. Um, so yeah, so I want to briefly walk through our mission statement um, and talk about potential ways that we can tackle uh, some of this vision starting in 2019 as we've expanded our team 
and, and put this kind of dream team together to help us tackle this. Um, and yeah, and I just thought it'd be fun to, to share how we're looking at the business from the inside. So today, uh, Dribble has uh, some to four million people a month come to the site for inspiration, um, to get turned on by the work of other designers, and to generate ideas for new projects. But 98% of those people are not designer players on the platform. These are design uh, um, enthusiasts. And we call them spectators. Um, Unfortunately, we've never invested in the spectator experience, so a lot of spectator profiles, uh, there's not much to look at, and there's not much value for the spectator either. But hidden behind a tab is actually some rich data about spectators, and they like a lot of things, and they save a lot of things, and today we actually mute a lot of these because we feel like it's low value um, work. But imagine a spectator profile uh, that's, a, that's a display for inspiration, and people can come to Dribble and actually create mood boards for inspiration that they can use in their own products, whether they're uh, a player on the site or not. Exposure. Uh, so this year will evolve. This is a big one. So we're going to evolve from being an exclusive community to being an, an inclusive community. Um, the invite system's not going away, but uh, I, I think that's just part of the DNA of Dribble. Um, but we're going to be making pretty huge efforts to ensure that great designers who are doing great work can become uh, players on Dribble. Um, one of the reasons the invite system exists is that we wanted to control two things in the beginning. One was quality control, and the other one was growth. For many years, it was just Dan and Rich, two guys in a room, and uh, the thing was organically taking off. It, it grew 100% organic. We never did marketing historically. Um, and so the server bills get expensive fast. So there was. There was a bit of a two-sided coin with that one. As we look at, uh, at 2019, we're going to make a big effort to be able to surface great design work on Dribble, not by gating people, um, but solve quality with technology. Um, and I won't get into details of how that'll work, but um, a great designer should be able to make our popular page, our home page, that gets millions of views. Um, whether they have 400,000 followers or 400 followers. Um, we'll be soon segmenting Dribble into categories. And so if you are in a niche like illustration or you're in a niche like motion interaction design, you can create a custom experience for you based around your, uh, your likes. Um, and we're going to be making uh, investments to navigation, filter, search, algorithms, uh, just to allow more of our millions of designers on the platform get exposure uh, that they deserve. Feedback. So this is the big one. Um, so we hear about this uh, a lot. So Dribble was a place uh, where long-form critique was welcome in the early days. But it's grown from a platform from, from hundreds of designers to hundreds of thousands of designers and millions more in the bleachers watching from the sidelines. Um, so it's really not the place, it's not a, a forum, a public forum is not a place to get trusted quality feedback on your design work. Um, but imagine a pro being able to build a private group of trusted peers and friends to be able to share a work in progress um, with that team and actually uh, request uh, critical feedback on that work in a trusted space. Uh, imagine a team getting, uh, getting that, building those trusted circles within the organization, getting key stakeholders involved, and, and getting feedback on work uh, before it's shared publicly. So we'll be looking at ways that we can do that. So today, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of up-and-coming designers visit Dribble, and there's really not a solution for them. There's not a product offering for this market other than inspiration viewing the work of, of other designers. Um, so in 2009, we'll begin to explore education as a new line of business. We'll be running experiments with trusted profiles and high-profile designers who are teaching master classes and, and coursework in, in various niches of design. Like I said, at the heart of Dribble is community. Uh, we are an inherent network, and that's really the value of Dribble. Um, a lot of designers come to Dribble because this 
design graph of connected designers and the ability to search. And we're making pretty dramatic uh, investments this year to make uh, discovery um, through a very long tail of 10 years uh, in a massive database of design um, more accessible. Um, part of a, a healthy network is engagement. So we'll be building better features through, uh, through the platform to help not only uh, designers get discovered, but uh, for their work to be interacted with and collected and hopefully, hopefully later found. Um, we'll be also working with the community in more of a intimate fashion. We'll be uh, building out a VIP community group um, to test the waters and new ideas we're cooking up and to get uh, immediate feedback. And finally, we'll continue to invest in hiring solution businesses in order to, to help designers find full-time jobs they love. Uh, we'll continue to improve the platform uh, experience of pros and teams looking for project-based gigs. And we'll also begin to explore non-traditional ways for designers to make a living. Um, we did some uh, research on our attachments, which are part of our shots, um, and we discovered that uh, the three main use cases for attachments were, were high-resolution shots, video, and source files. Well, we just launched high-resolution shots on Dribbble, and we just we now support video. And so we're looking at, at source files, and that could be, uh, we could potentially add a transactional gateway there to allow designers to sell their, their work to, to other designers who are looking for assets. Um, we also polled the, the community of spectators and found that there's a demand for prints. And so being a community of artists and illustrators and designers, uh, we're looking at ways that we can expand and, and help designers make money through selling uh, on the platform. So our near-term focus in 2019, and I'm sharing all this just because I think it's pretty unique that a company really opens up and, and shares all this. I hope it's not too boring or, or that you're, you're not familiar with a lot of these features, but, um, uh, but I've had the flu for three days, so this is kind of the last thing I can pull together last minute. Uh, so we want to focus in growing the community. Um, so we want to really double down on connecting the world's best designers and creative professionals. We feel that the design base that we have right now is it's just a fraction of the total population of, of amazing designers um, in our community. As part of that effort of becoming a more inclusive community, we plan to partner with top design schools and, and uh, amazing platforms like, like Envision and other, other tools, um, conferences, in order to help their audiences become members of Dribbble and get exposure for their work. Portfolio network. So we've had an internal debate over the years. I mentioned, you know, is it a place to uh, is it a place to share like a close up snapshot of a glossy button? That was a lot of the stuff that we had uploaded in, in 2009, 2010. Um, today, it's evolved to become a a, a lot of people's uh, sole portfolio and where they show work, where they get uh, exposure and recognition. And so we kind of put a, a stake in the ground recently into that and decided that we actually are a portfolio network. We, we, we debated this for a really long time and kind of fought against it. And so if we are a portfolio network, if we are these interconnected uh, portfolio profiles for designers, then we want to build the best damn uh, place for designers to share their work. Um, as I mentioned, we recently uh, started with the, ant, uh, the atomic unit of design, the shot. We're now going to be uh, investing in expanding the profile, extrapolating to the, the wrapper around that. Um, and then we're going to be investing in, uh, in tackling a, a better display of work, better feedback, uh, as I mentioned a little bit, and, and project case studies. Hiring platform. Um, helping designers find work they love. So we have the number one job board in the world for for designers, um, gets about 2,500 clicks on average per listing. Um, if I'm honest, it's a bit of an archaic model. Um, as a hiring manager, you don't want to have to filter through dozens or even hundreds of resumes to find a qualified candidate. Um, we also have a sourcing tool that allows, uh, allows recruiters to search for designers um, 
but I don't know about you, but you know, being shoulder tapped uh, for work opportunities when you're not looking for a work opportunity can be annoying. Um, so we're trying to look for a better way that we can uh, help designers find work. And so we recently launched this summer, Dribble Talent, and we aim to bu build an efficient marketplace. Uh, it's really like a sourcing as a service that when you're looking for your next gig, that gig comes to you. So that's just now getting off the ground, but so far it's been really exciting. And then just lastly, uh, uh, we're, we're also investing in, in native apps and infrastructure. We want to extend the Dribbble experience uh, across own devices, but partnering with design tools like Envision and, and Figma and Sketch to be able to upload your work directly from the, the tool you're creating it in. Um, and then ultimately, uh, Dribble is a platform and a community and a business is successful when we help other designers uh, become sec successful. And this is our North Star. And that's all I have. So thanks for listening.